Now, I'm going to be tying a fly they call the pot scrubber. Now, pot scrubber was obviously named after the tinsel used from a pot scrubber. This here, a copper coloured, as you can see, there's one of the strands coming from it. Now, it's an old fly, it's an old pattern that goes way, way back. Now, it was originally tied uh, by a gentleman called Dick Wigram, uh, which is and get very popular in Tasmania. Uh, but the, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a link to some more information on the nymph, uh, on my more info on YouTube, so you can see it. Now you basically cut a length off. It's actually quite thick, and it's very it is tinsel. You're going to be careful with it because it, if you draw your finger through it too quickly, you will cut yourself. So take your, just be careful with it. Now sizes, normally tied in sort of 12s and 10s, but you can tie it smaller. Though no, this tinsel is a wee bit heavy, so if it was going smaller, I would probably just use a, a copper wire. Uh, but anyway, to add a wee bit of weight to the fly or to the the hook, I'm going to use a, a copper wire. Now, hook choices is either up to yourself. This is a an all-purpose medium, uh, full mill hook, and what I'm going to do is just thicken up the thorax area using this is a, a small copper wire. So I'm just going to build it up. Just remove the waste. Now you can see I've got it on a, a spool and I'm using my bobbin holder to wind it on. So I'm just building up a thorax. Just helps to give the, the shape of the nymph as well. It's giving it a wee bit of weight. If you're happy with the shape, you can just break it off. Now yeah, I prefer to obviously wire to wire or slip so a wee bit of super glue doesn't go wrong. This is just the full mill super glue in the brush, so it's easy to apply. Now, thread I'm going to be using is a, a uni thread in dark brown, an AO. Just going to run the wax through it. It's a wee bit stiff, so we rub, I rub the sides of the, the bobbin on my nose just to allow it to slip. So then what we do is just come up over. Controlling the turns of the thread with the waist. Then we wind towards the back of the hook, in line with the barb, and then remove the waist. So that's it sealed up. Now you can flatten the thread. Uh, the what you can do. I've got a pair of pliers here that you can flatten, get more of a flat profile using the wire. After you wind the thread through, just that'll give you a nicer, sort of flatter shape. Sometimes you can do that. Now, tail fibres, just using, this is a cock hackle, it's, just an, it's a dark brown for the tail fibres. Now, I, I don't be shy with them. To get them to line up, just 90 degrees from the stem of the feather, the tips will line up. It's just a matter of tying them on. We're looking for a tail length, round about the body length. So I usually do a turn on top, go underneath the fibres, and lift and separate the fibres. And that will spread them out. Just like a fan. Uh, there we go. Trim that length of the body. So we've got our pot scrubber tinsel. Now it's important that you wax your thread so that it protects the thread as well as give you grip. Because the tinsel will cut through the thread. So just take your time and wind it up. Always thinking of the shape of your nymph when you're doing this. Come back down. Now the dubbing blend, I've got a, a brown seals for. And I've got some wool. This is a wool here. It's normal brown wool. Now the blend is to blend these together. So what I've done here is using a, a toothbrush. This is an old toothbrush which I've trimmed to stiffen up the fibres. Brush these open, and what you do is cut around about an inch or quarters of an inch of the wool away. Get some of your seals for you're looking around about 50 50, and you can blend this together. This will give you your dubbing blend. Just work it together. Stay your time you're doing this. I usually do it like a batch so it's, it's ready. But I'll just use this, this mix, just to show what it looks like. When you're happy then you can 
blend it into, so dub it onto your thread. Slide it up. Now you want to get it started, so they just start it there with twisting. Get a nice shape. And work your way up. At this point I'm just going to check to see where I started. Don't worry about it just being thread turns at the back, because your first turn of your ribs going to be on them. You're not going to see it, so just work your way up. Tighten when you need to, when you're happy, you can take away the excess. Bring your rib up now again, make sure you wax your thread so that when you go to tie your tinsel off, it doesn't cut through. Around about four turns, especially this thickness. Just come up with a turn of the thread and then let the tinsel go. Because if you keep the tinsel tight and holding both the thread and turning the thread or winding the thread, the chances are you'll cut through. So, when you've done that, I'm going to use the inside of my scissors, right in the inside. Because this is proper tinsel, it's real tinsel. Right, just going to flatten this down with my nail. Again, a wee bit of wax on. And then work your way down. Just a wee quick look. So you've got a nice tapered shape. Now I'm going to use a brown raffia for the thorax cover, but I'm going to darken it, this is a wee bit light, so I'm going to darken it down with a pen once I've tied it in. So what we do is tie this on the top. Raffia was used a lot years ago for them thorax covers. See how we start, that's fine. And again we go back to our blended dubbing. And now we just slightly dub it on. You want it quite loose because you want some of the, the seals for to come out. Work your way down, just going to build up a decent thorax, don't be shy. Draw back any excess. Just a wee touch of wax on my thread here, tidy the head area up. Now what I'm going to do is just use my finger, or you could use Velcro, right, to draw down some of the, the dubbing. You can bring this over, just to show you what it looks like. Tie this in. You want three or four turns. Trim the raff here away. Again, a wee bit of wax on your thread. Tidy the head area up. You want a reasonable size head, don't be shy with the head size. Looks okay. Now it's a wee rough nymph, it's, it's what you want. Trim away your thread. Let me quick look, see how things are sitting. Get a wee bit more of your shape. Just trimming an angle here. Take away some of the legs that are a wee bit long. As I say, it's meant to be rough, so keep it rough. Now to darken it down, I'm just using a permanent marker, the thorax. So we've got the thorax. You can keep it this colour, but I'm going to darken it. We give that a minute or so to sort of dry and then we can varnish the thorax cover as well as the head. So we're doing the head, just touch the head all the way around. But get a wee drop more varnish here and then just be careful to control the varnish on the top. And there we are. That's your pot scrubber. Just take this one away. Could be nymph pattern, as I say, worth having a go. It's a, it's a good pattern, it's a good colour. So it is, and uh, certainly one I would recommend. So I hope you enjoyed that.